driven to a state of anxiety and depression due to an all too meager appreciation of my work, I decided one fateful day to revenge myself on the art critics and experts by doing something the likes of which the world has never seen before. Though his revenge proved arduous, its very challenge seemed to feed Van Meegeren's meticulous psyche. He had to think of everything, down to the very chemicals in the paint. First, he purchased authentic 17th century canvases and brushes made of badger hair. He then mixed his paints using old 17th century formulas. To further mimic the aging process, he baked the paintings and then rolled them over a cylinder to create cracklier and washed them with black India ink to fill in the cracks. He also developed a finish made from an early plastic called Bakelite. This finish made his paintings impervious to what art experts of the time relied on for spotting forgeries. Completing this process took Van Meegeren in months, at times even years, but his efforts would pay off. As art expert Jonathan Lopez says, Van Meegeren had hit the technological jackpot. Although Van Meegeren faked many different artists, his Vermeer forgeries would prove the most lucrative. German art expert Max Freelander said, Art dealers of the 1920s lulled themselves to sleep at night dreaming about Vermeer. And Jonathan Lopez writes that discovering any picture that might be accepted as a Vermeer was the interwar art world's equivalent of the quest for the Holy Grail. Art and power went hand in hand and owning a Vermeer was as high up on the art scale as one could go. Vermeer's beautiful technique played a part in this popularity, but even more important to a forger was the scarcity of his canvases. At the time, there were only 35 known Vermeer paintings. I picked one of the five greatest artists who ever lived. I was looking for the grandest succès d'estime that a forger could possibly achieve and Vermeer seemed like a suitably big name for the job. Hitler and his henchman, Hermann Goering, were both duped by Van Meegeren. Hitler took his own life as the war ended, but Goering was captured and tried as a war criminal. The prosecutors found among Goering's belongings all the transcripts of his business with Van Meegeren. As a result, Van Meegeren was arrested as a collaborator and escorted in chains through the streets of the Netherlands. Branded as a traitor, with a sentence of death hanging over his head, Van Meegeren, the collaborator, sought to save his life by proclaiming himself a forger, an honorable deceiver whose sole ambition in selling forgeries to the like of Goering was to humiliate the Nazis. The painting in Goering's hand is not, as you assume, a Vermeer of Delft, but a Van Meegeren. I painted the picture. At first, no one believed him, but he persuaded his captors to provide him with supplies and a room. For the next five months, in front of witnesses, he painted his last forgery. By the time the final gavel came down on the trial, Van Meegeren had been transformed from a traitor into a national hero. The death sentence was overturned. He was charged as a forger and sentenced to one year in prison. Ironically, he died before serving his sentence, sealing the success of his final cause.